All right. Welcome to Friday the 23rd, I think. Friday the 23rd of December is the Care Friday Reselling, and this is our second 45D weekly live stream. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit at the moment and just make sure the sound is coming through clearly. Um, just double checking my stream strength and all of that to make sure you're all signed on and, and um, feel free to feel free to sing out in the comments. I'd love to get comments on these. I want discussion and the more popular they get, then the more comments that I can interact with you. So if you're here, um, throw a wave out, say hi, tell us where you're from and uh, where you're watching from, et cetera. And as we go through the, um, the stream and the topics today, um, throw your questions in the comments um, and I'll either get to them as they're relevant there or at the end, we'll go over all the questions people have. So um, today's 45D weekly live stream. This is insider tips to yacht charter um, in Croatia. So we're looking at uh, the whole series we're going to do over a number of different live streams. And I'll talk more about what's coming up in the coming weeks at the end. Um, is these tips and tricks and these realities of chartering yachts here in Croatia um, and what it's like, what it's like on the here on the ground, etc. So um, the topics to covered today will be comparing apples with apples. Okay, not all listings are created equal, so we're going to go over what to look out for there um, and look a few look at a few uh, different situations you need to look out for. So my watch is beeping. I'm going to shut it up. I'll remind myself to do that um, ahead of the live stream next time. <laughs> um, so that's where we're at. And we're coming to you live from Trogir in Croatia. Uh, we live here permanently in Croatia. So. All right, let's get stuck into it. So um, biggest mistake we see people um, make when they're looking, at, uh, looking for a beer boat charter is you think you're comparing apples with apples. You think your uh, one price you're getting from uh, one listing is comparable to the other boat from another listing. When you search um, on big uh, agency websites like uh, Zizu or Book a Boat or things like this, when you search on that, that is pulling information from all of the different charter companies. So what we're here to talk about today is the reality and the difference of prices on some of these things. So they're not all the same, all right? So two similarly priced yachts um, might look the same at a glance, but when you look closer, um, what is included can be, um, it, it's just its just not the same. What is included could be, now I've got a question. I've got to uh, check out what's going on here. I've got a something. Um, who have I got? I've got uh, Palasti Gior Giorgi. Ahoy. <laughs> How's it going? Michael Freer is watching. Mahin is watching. Excellent. Good to see you guys out there. Um, so remember to throw your questions in if you have any, and it's good to hear from you. I'm going to get used to this live stream thing. It's, uh, it's, it's, I'm usually behind the camera. <laughs> so um, what is included in your charter can vary greatly, okay? So um, how? How can it? How can it vary? Basically, look out for the compulsory extra costs. We have these, um, and Charterbots have these things called transit logs, which could also be called comfort packs, which could also be called a charter pack. Uh, Navigate Yachting have something called a Navigate Carefree. Now, what these are, these are an inclusion of a number of different either services or uh, products or add-ons that you can have with your yacht. So, if you kind of look at it like a rental car, if you rent your car, you get your car and you get seats in the steering wheel and all of that, but you don't necessarily get a, this is old school GPS unit. Sometimes they have this old GPS unit or a car seat for baby or whatever these add-ons. So with the yacht, some of our biggest add-ons um, are usually things like the outboard engine, um, the final cleaning. These are extra costs you're going to have to have to pay for. Now, a Comfort pack, which is um, what it's largely referred to, a comfort pack is uh, including a number of these things. So where one charter company might say, and I've got some examples here that I'll, I'll, I'll look into, one charter company might say clearly that and list what all of their inclusions are. For instance, um, and I'm not going to mention charter company names here today because I want this to be evergreen and things change. Um, if, you, if you're using us for the service or whatever like that, of course, we're going to be able to sort you out with that. But effectively, um, one charter company that we use regularly lists their obligatory comfort pack as including um, VAT 
bed linen, towels, final cleaning, diver check, coffee machine, cooking gas, and a small startup kit with things like a few rolls of toilet paper, uh, dishwashing liquid, and five liters of extra fuel for your outboard engine. So, um, and the outboard engine is also, um, actually they don't list the outboard engine in the comfort pack, they list the outboard engine as gratis, as free. Uh, so they include that anyway. Now, um, other charter companies may not. So remember, these are obligatory costs and it will likely not be in your initial quote. When you look up a yacht and say, right, how much is it for the week of July 15 to whatever? Uh, it says it's three and a half thousand, but it doesn't include the extra, what could be anywhere from 200 to 350, 550 um, euros for a comfort pack or transit log. Um, so I've got another question up here. Can you suggest an alternative charter-based port for Dubrovnik? I actually loved Miet and Lostavo and looking for something closer than Trogir, obviously. So I can. I'll get to that one at the end. I want to stay on the topic on these ones here, but I will get to that. Thank you for that question. Um, so that that is an example of a, of a charter pack that's quite comprehensive. Now, outboard engine is a big a big one to look out for because the um, the smaller boats tend to not include it in their comfort packs. When I say smaller, you're looking at 35 to 45 feet, whereas 45, 50, and 50 plus tend to be um, uh, those are, that outboard engine lives on that boat and it, and it stays and it comes included. So watch out for that because outboard engines are anywhere from 100 euros for a two and a half horsepower to 250 euros or, or whatever it might be, extra cost. Um, and then they're listing that they give you five liters fuel um, included in your cost or not. So keep an eye out for that one. Uh, now that one I gave an example here, that's a comprehensive inclusion of about a charter pack or um, a comfort pack. Um, there are some at the other end of the extreme, such as um, there is another charter company uh, that we use this season, um, this season just gone, 2022, um, a couple of times, and it has no information on this this kind of charter pack on their listing um or their booking confirmations nothing it wasn't there and yet you turn up to, on the charter for the charter on the day um and they don't include even towels in the charter um but you're welcome to rent them now this was really interesting because the first time i booked this for a client i did not actually see it one of the others saw it and said hey look at this and it's like um on the on the confirmation it said bed linen only um, instead of saying linen included, which is often means towels and sheets, et cetera, uh, it said bed linen included, therefore no towels. And then as we said, you show up and the towel rental was eight or 10 euros per set. So if you had six people on board, 60 more euros to pay for that set of towels. Um, and if you had a known that, you'd bring them with you or whatever, um, or you'd... <laughs> or you would rent their higher version of their Comfort Pack Plus or whatever it was that included the towels. So these details details are really important. Um, we also came across a charter company this summer, uh, just gone, who didn't even, uh, sorry, they didn't make the beds. Now, I've actually found this more common this season than I ever had. Uh, I think I've come across now three situations where the beds are not made and came across another one where they listed beds made for you like it was some amazing thing. So I have never before this one gone on a charter where they have not made the beds and presented the boat for us. Now, I'll be honest, we don't rent cheap boats. Uh, when I say that, we're renting bigger boats, um, generally quite new and premium. So that is that is one reason that those beds will be made. But that is a charter company specific thing. So again, compare apples with apples. This charter company over here includes all of these things plus 100 euros uh, worth of outboard engine, fuel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, two gas bottles for cooking, linen, towels, beach towels. Um, and yet this one over here at 500 euros cheaper, but you show up at the base and how much more do you need to spend? So um, that's that's really important. And um, if anyone's got any questions on this one now, throw them in, um, throw them in now and I'll answer them. But effectively, there are a lot of extra costs that we we just don't don't necessarily know of. So these are these are details that are overlooked, and they can have a massive um, massive impact on on the budget of the trip and and everything like that. For instance, um, if you're renting out of one particular marina um, that has just added a eco 
um, EcoTax, um, which is for garbage and um, recycling and water and power. And now every charter must pay another 80 euros. So that was that's brand new and that's coming in next year. So always keep an eye out for this stuff. And as we say, um, don't uh, don't you know, make sure you're comparing apples. Uh, <clears throat> okay, what have I got next on this list? Um, So that marina, yeah, that marina eco fee, um, that's something. And I mean, the, these these are going to crop up, crop up all over the show. So yeah. Now another thing with your with your searching for listings, um, things like this. Have you noticed that on most charter boat listings, all right, uh, the photos available can look a bit suspect. They all look very very good. So you have a range. You have a range. Now, we actually, as part of the YouTuber and, and the media we do here, we actually sometimes are taking photos or and or doing video check-ins for yachts that are in charter so that um, there is a comprehensive library of photos of that actual boat, showing the name of the boat, showing the configuration and everything. There's a lot of um, charter companies, especially when yachts are coming in, um, but they tend to not update this, that just have stock photos. All right. Uh, one of the most common photos I see is of Lagoon 42 with its Jenica up, no shade, um, Bimini or anything, and they're all sailing along so happy. That is a stock photo from the Lagoon website. All right. That's and it's listed on 50% of the Lagoon 42s out there. Now, I'm saying they should not show that. I think they should list this as a stock photo, not actual boat. You don't have a Jenica included in your in your charter, but be very careful of that. So um, you may have a listing where the condition of the boat looks really, really good. It's like, wow, how, how they really got the lighting sorted on this. But those images are not the same. And quite unfortunately, quite often, they are also um, showing the wrong layout. Okay, So like put stock photos up of a five cabin yacht when they're listing a four cabin yacht with four bathrooms and you're looking at this going hey what what's going on here when there should be bunks but there's there's not actually there um so um okay palasti just said do you think a pre-season last minute bargain could work could negotiating in such a situation work look yes but this this is often different between whether you are and if you're talking about croatia here whether you are close by in Europe and flexible on your dates, whether you're flying in um, outside of Europe, you know, and flights where you've spent on this driving country tend to be able to get a last minute bargain a lot better because you will be drastically reduced in your choice of charter. Likely, now, okay, it used to be the case that you would pay a lot less for last minute charters. What happened in the last two seasons was there was a shortage of charter boats the, um, in, in, this, in the sense that a lot of people wanted to come and a lot of stuff was booked out. So those boats that were still available, they were no longer going for, hey, last minute deals, 25% off. They were going for full price because they were only thing left and everyone wanted them. So last minute deals looking at maybe months like April, no, I wouldn't even say May anymore. Last minute deals in Croatia in eight, maybe months like April. No, I wouldn't even say May anymore. Last minute deals in Croatia in April, October, November. Yes, October is getting popular too. It's a beautiful month. Um, but through the season, if you are booking your yacht and you want to get what you want, or you want something that's going to suit your charter, I suggest booking now. Like we're already getting scarce on the dates. We're very picky with the yachts that we want for our premium tours, as in there's one of them, but they are getting very scarce right now. So um, there's still a lot of stuff available now and there will be for the next three or four weeks. This is the time when people are booking. Christmas specials and early booking discounts are up. Um, there is room to negotiate with, as I say, those April or the November months. Uh, it's very risky to do it, um, to do it late late in the piece at the moment with the with the market the way it is um <clears throat> so uh yes yeah, so we're talking about those stock photos um this is another thing that we do when we provide the service finding bareboat charters for people is that if there's stock photos on there i'm requesting the actual photos i had one of these um i sent out a number of options to a client and they were like hey i really want to go for this but we were looking at a 2015 model 
of a Bavaria, and they had stock photos on that. Um, and the condition of the boat obviously was drastically different. And even then, when you request photos or you see photos, if you're really doing this on your own um, and you and you have the ability to request when those photos were taken, all right? Because if you do a proper photo shoot of a boat in 2020, then I guarantee those photos are still the same in 2023. So some boats are maintained very well, others aren't. So just this is really important is to make sure um, you, you know that. And yeah, send a written request by email for those for those current images, both inside and out. Um, and most card companies should have them on file. <laughs> um, but if you start looking for boats, you'll get used to looking at stock photos. Um, okay. Um, so there are often... There are often other details that can be overlooked that have a huge impact on your uh, on your budget and your schedule. Um, so, for example, is the boat you are looking for on an island? Okay, there's a couple of companies just out there on the island of Shota, but that is there is no land bridge or anything like the bridge. Yet you must take a ferry there. So, when can I take that ferry there? Um, how much does the ferry cost, etc.? That is another cost you're going to have to consider. Um, are you driving across? Is it a car ferry? Or is your parking situation going to be? Parking is another one um, for whatever marina you're going to be in. So just keep an eye out for those, those are the costs. Um, also, something like if you're booking a yacht out of, for example, um, Marina Klemek, which is in Plemoshten, um, this is 40 minutes from the split airport. Okay, so it's a 40 minute drive from the split airport. So how are you going to get there? Um, and it's over an hour from split city. Often a lot of people will come in to Croatia. We're going to say, right, we'll sail. Um, uh, sorry, we'll stay a night and split two nights and split, which is a great idea, highly recommend it, and then have to get to the marina from there. So just understanding position of marinas. Um, and along with that one, there's one small shop in that marina. It's kind of tucked into the, when I say the middle of nowhere, it's on the coast, obviously, but there's not a, it's not in a town. It's not close by a river like Split or Trogir. So there is a supermarket five or 10 minutes drive away, which is very well stocked, but it's five or 10 minutes drive. So this is another cost you just have to consider if you're provisioning and you're flowing in. Um, so look, these these kinds of um, things are seemingly minor details, uh, but they can have a major impact on the beginning of your charter, uh, especially if they aren't known about or factored into in your planning process. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, uh, that's, and I mean, even, even down to the point of check-in times, um, part of your uh, premium comfort packs, if you add this with the um, with the the charter company, could be that it includes early check in. How many people? And I wonder in the comments, I'm going to ask this. I'll answer at the end. What time do you think if you charter a yacht, Croatia, wherever? What time do you think you're going to get on that yacht on the day? So you're leaving on a Saturday, uh, and throw this in the comments. I'd like everyone who's watching to just answer this. What time do you think you just straight out will get onto your boat? on standard without booking an early check-in, all right? Because usually people are a little bit in the dark about this and, and plan their trips um, <laughs> a little bit long. Kind of giving it away here, aren't I? But um, yeah. Okay, so I'll wait to see if any comments come in on that, but um, we'll tell you before I go. So um, are there any other questions? I don't think any other questions come through. I'll just check here. Um, Though, okay, I did say I'd go back to Palasti's uh, question. Can I suggest an alternative charter base port for Dubrovnik? Uh, loved me at Lastovo and looking for something closer than Trogia, Elgosnica, etc. Okay, there is not much, there is not much down around Dubrovnik. Okay, you've got Dubrovnik um, up uh, Atsi Marina, ACI Marina, and Marina Flapa. The charter boats are mainly up the river at Atsi Marina. There is one other marina. It's it's an hour's north. It's called Slano, um, and there's an ACI there as well. I'm not sure how many charter boats run out of that. I don't think there is a charter base there. Oh, there is a charter. Okay, um, Mahin is telling me there is a charter base at Slano, so that's one of them. Um, after that, you're going to have to be coming out of um, Makarska. Uh, there is definitely some charter boats coming out of Makarska and... There is one more place down the coast there. If I find that for you, I will um I will put it into the comments of the video. Um, but effectively, no, there's not really. You've got all of these charter bases from split north, um, but south there's there's this huge gap until you get to um and, and until you get to Dubrovnik. So 
yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a, a bit of a tough one. Um, and yeah, because I mean, Miet and Lastovo, they're amazing places. And if you're planning to go there, it's something you want to go right. Well, I'm going to get out of my get out of my base uh, wherever I am, split Kastela, Trogir, um, or Dubrovnik, and then just get some headway on the right winds to get out to the islands. Definitely. Um, so, um, Mahina said 2 p.m. Um, me started at 3 p.m. Okay. Okay. Lunchtime check-in from hashtag. So, effectively, the standard contract on charter companies is the check-in is 5 p.m. So, you have no stake or claim to your boat before 5 p.m. on the day of embarkation okay um often charter companies will say hey tell us when you're going to arrive and of course there are going to be boats ready before that they are endeavoring to get Everett. trust me they want to get you all out of there as soon as possible they would be stoked if they could get everyone out at 12 <laughs> but effectively if you're looking really want to get away early and you want an early check-in early check-ins are going to be coming in at around about 12 p.m um there are some circumstances where a charter company might say, hey, the boat will be ready earlier because the party left uh, on Friday instead of on Saturday morning or, and they got, they got a chance to clean, whatever it might be. But effectively, your check-in time on most charter contracts is 5 p.m. So you should be, like in my experience, you're expecting anywhere from 3 p.m. onwards and not expecting it before. If you're coming in April or May, Maybe a bit earlier if it's not busier, but these days you can't even count on that. If you're coming in July, August, you're looking at 4 p.m. plus. There's just so many boats to get through, so many check-ins to do. And remember, that boat comes in Friday. Guests get off at 8.30 or 9 a.m. in the morning if they get off on time. Whatever damage come in, they've got to fix between Friday night at 6 p.m. and um, Saturday when they get the boat to you, if that's your boat. So, um, yeah, just just be aware of that. Um Excellent. So that's the answer to those. Um, effectively, so we are going to be doing a, a number of these series. This is a, now a weekly thing, 45D weekly on Fridays. So I want you to watch out in January for um, the coming up um, Inside a Yacht, Inside a Tips to Yacht Charter in Croatia Part 2. Okay, we're going to be talking about insurance and your deposit insurance and what you need to have up front when you arrive at the charter company office. Um, going over all the details as to the liability you have, if you have a skipper on board or a paid skipper, what does this actually mean? What happens if there's an accident um, and how much is it all worth, et cetera? What are the options? Because deposit insurance is a, a relative thing in the last two or three years and it's becoming very popular. Um, and then we'll be coming into your charter costs and the week coming after that, we'll be coming into charter costs and the realities of your budget, trying to get around the islands, how much everything costs out on the islands. And of course, we're taking the euro, so things will likely shift a little bit. So it'll be a little bit easier to um, perceive though. Uh, if you do want to book your charter um, here in Croatia and you'd like help with that, we are an agency. We will book, uh, help you book your charter. We'll take you through the whole process and hope, um, and, and get you the best deal and the best boat fitting for your family we can. Um, and remember, that service doesn't cost you any extra. It would be the same if you went directly through the charter company. So um, if you want to do that, get in touch with us. We'll also post a link down the bottom that you can make an inquiry. Uh, if you want to do a charter, it's a little plan your charter type form you can fill out, and we'll get in touch with you way and look at finding you the right yacht for trip. Um, so... Uh, it looks like I've got another question. Ha, 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 ha. How do you get a spinnaker or jenica for the boat? It is usually not listed, but I guess there might be some available. Yes, that is going to depend on your charter company, okay, depending on which company you're running through. Often on the listings, they'll say optional additional equipment, um, jenica or spinnaker, optional additional equipment, um, jenica or spinnaker, uh, most commonly jenica. There's not many spinnakers being rented anymore unless you're going for um, uh, match racing fleets like the Bavaria First Fleets. They do have spinnakers and spinnaker poles. Most places are going to offer a Jenica, though, for your standard charter models. Um, you'll have to pay for that rental, which could be somewhere in the vicinity of 300 euros, and you'll also have to pay an extra deposit on uh, so security deposit for the Jenica in case you rip it or break it. Or destroy it <laughs> um, and that could be anywhere from 600 euros plus because they're expensive source. 
So how do you go about getting that? Um, in your inquiry, if you're inquiring with us, say, hey, I'd like a boat and I would like the option of Genica because not every charter company offers this um, and not every boat's properly suitable suited to it. Um, so mention that in the initial inquiry and it can help you out with that. Uh, if you're booking through another, um, another portal, then look at those additional equipment that you can add. Usually they list skipper, hostess, um, paddle boards, you know, all, all these sorts of things, and a generous PSA will be on there. Sometimes even a code zero um, or, a, or a larger Genoa uh, furling Genica could be on there as well. So that's how you go about those. Um, <clears throat> anything else? I'm starting to lose my voice. How long have I been talking? A little while. Hmm? Oop, my microphone's fallen down. <laughs> Uh, okay, is buying an ex-charter boat generally a mad idea? No, no, it's not a mad idea. Uh, you want to be well informed um, about that boat, where it's been, um, what its life's been, and get a good survey. Like, I mean, surveys on boats when you're buying boats is pretty standard anyway, but on an ex-charter, um, it's really nice to know how many charter companies that's been bounced around. But uh, this is one of the things I do in my yacht consult service is, uh, largely with charter boats here, and of course owner boats if um, if we find them, but uh, is go in and find suitable boats for you. There is some amazing deals to be had. It's a really good way to get into the market. Um, they are definitely cheaper, and you have the option of exporting it out of the EU and saving the VAT on the boat. So it's a very lucrative um, thing, and it happens all the time. Uh, it's 30% of my job is helping people um, find the right boat to buy here in Croatia or any, you know, anywhere in Europe at the moment. I'm flying around and helping that. So, no, I don't think it's a mad idea. Um, you just want to be aware of exactly what that is. So there, there will be another live um, on this topic as the weeks go by. Uh, and actually, if you look up for me live next week, that's the one I wanted to, to mention. Um, next week, we can meet a client and a friend of mine that um, of ours who is embarking on a new adventure with his new yacht. And I've been going through the process of finding this boat for him. And he's been doing it remotely through me. Uh, he lives in the United States. And he'll actually be here in two days. And we're going to go north to pick up his yacht and sail it down the coast. So next week, he will be here. Um, and we will do an interview with him. I'm not sure if he knows this yet, actually. I told him it was going to happen, but I didn't actually confirm it with him, but he's, he's locked into it. It's, um, I'll tell him it's in the contract. So um, so watch out for that next week. Uh, that live stream will be up in a couple of days so that you can um, click on it, put on notifications. Please remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we're building our subscribers. Um, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you see what's coming through. Um, and there'll be more yacht reviews coming up and more Sharpen Up sailing series as well. Um, uh, again, in the comments and description after the feed, we'll post a link to our Sharpen Up flotilla. If you are a new charter skipper or just want to get out and get some um, tips and tricks or some help, we run the Sharpen Up flotilla, but you can read about that on the page. I won't talk about it right here. And we've got one more question come in, two more questions. Um, did he buy an ex-charter yacht? Yes, he did. He bought an Oceanus 48 um, out of charter. It's um, 2000. 15 so it's been in charter for seven years um do you happen to be around in dusseldorf at the boat show i can't write all my questions here <laughs> um i don't know if i'm going to have time to get to dusseldorf this year I, i've never been i would love to go at some point um but uh i'll post another link i'll actually get someone in the team to reply to your question with a link if you want to go through um, to the link and fill out a form for our yacht consult you can book a call with me um, for my yacht consult service obviously it's a paid service but we do an initial 15 minute call and you can have some questions there and if you want to help out with that then I can help you with this stuff um, and alternatively if anyone is coming through Trogia split area uh, get in touch and um, I love having coffees and lunch bought for me so that's another option as well um, all right. Sunglasses, peace, thumbs up. Excellent. Hey, thank you so much for engaging, um, Palasti. That was great. And everyone else as well. Um, it's been it's been real. It's been great. This has been a great turnout for our second 45D weekly. So thank you so much for coming up. Remember, subscribe, throw some comments in. And if you thought it was helpful or interesting, please share it. Um, just send the link to someone who you think this might be interesting so we can get it out there. Uh, other than that, I've got a muffin waiting for me here. And I'm starting to lose my voice. So unless anyone looks at me from in my room here and tells me um, that I'm missing anything or any questions, then I'm going to sign off. Cool.
Thank you very much for being here. And um, yeah, Croatia, tips live, 45D weekly. Ciao.